All right. Hello, how is everyone doing today? Good. Okay. Thank you for joining us today um, for uh, our Laker Lessons um, TED Talks live event. Um, today, our guest speaker will be uh, Mr. Oscar Hopkins. And I'm going to take a moment um, to read um, his bio and share a little information with you about Mr. Hopkins before he starts his um, presentation. Um, Mr. Hopkins, um, he was born and raised in the southeast section of Queens, New York. Oscar is currently the assistant director of alumni and annual giving. Being an alumnus of Clayton State, his work is personal to him. While his older siblings were straight A students, Oscar found more purpose in developing interpersonal bonds with schoolmates and spending time after school as a shop boy who duties included sweeping the floor and dusting off customers in the family business, the Hopkins Barbershop. As a teenager, Oscar finally became a barber, a barber by his grandfather and namesake, Oscar Sr., with whom he continued to work with at the barbershop, which is a longtime staple in the community. With the help of family and friends who were willing to allow him to improve his craft, he did and eventually taught other young men how to barber. After attending Jamaica High School, he enrolled at Megar Evers College in Brooklyn, New York, but soon found the demand for the barbershop increasing with, and withdrew. On February the 1st, 2010, Oscar packed all his belongings in his car and headed to Jonesboro when a childhood, with a childhood friend, reached out and told him about a booming economy and affordability to work and go to school. Upon arriving, he found a barbershop to work in. He worked part-time at UPS, Clorox, and FedEx to make ends meet. After hearing about Clayton State University through barbershop chat, Oscar applied immediately. It is there that he reconnected with education, joined the AmeriCorps service program, attended on and off campus conferences hosted by school, and joined Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and fell in love with higher education. Not only does alumnus um, engagement allow him to work at an institution that molded him for success. It also allows him to work with the people who are there throughout his journey. I want to introduce you all to Mr. Os Oscar Hopkins. Hey everybody. Um, I just want to thank everybody for showing up today. Um, I, don't, I didn't know my life was this interesting when people wanted to hear about it, but, but here I am. So thank you guys for coming. Uh, the name of this I chose um, is We've Come This Far By Faith. Uh, I chose that name because my story um, is for everybody. Everybody has their own story, so everybody has come this far by their own faith, um, and so it's a team effort. But I, I want to talk a little bit about my perspective and how uh, my faith got me to where I am today and, and hope somebody learned something. Um, so. Uh, I personally had to lean on faith just a little bit harder um, than other people may have. Uh, for some people, their route, you know, their route was easy. Some people, not so easy. But uh, mine was, it, it was something that I definitely needed faith to, to do. Um, so uh, thank you, Willie, for that introduction. Again, I was born in um, Southeast Queens, New York. Uh, I'm an 80s baby. I was born in 85. Um, my dad is a, uh, was a New York City police officer. And he was a Marine, and my mom worked as a civil servant in New York City. And um, they are still married. I don't even know how many years, 40 something years, so shout out to them. Um, so I, I came up the youngest of three children. Uh, my two older sisters um, were scholars. One went to the best high school in, in Queens, the other one, straight A's, straight B's, um, really straight A's, no B's. And, and then here I came, the only boy, and making C's and D's. And the moment I made a B, that was like, wow, let's celebrate. Let's take him out to dinner. He made a B, finally. Um, and so I had a lot of comparisons um, being made to, you know, between me and my sisters. And my cousins, they all made A's and B's too. But I was more like the, he talks a lot. He likes to talk a lot. He makes a lot of friends and so on and so forth. And so academics wasn't really my forte. Homework did it the morning of, you know, if I did it at all. Um, 
always apply myself at the last minute. Um, so that was, you know, uh, elementary and junior high school. I uh, went to Jamaica High School. For those of y'all who watch Raising Cannon, I don't know if y'all watch Raising Cannon, but Jamaica High School, set in Jamaica High School, uh, the number one most dangerous high school in New York City at the time. And I don't know why, but a lot of people took that as a badge of honor. Like, we go to the most dangerous high school, wow. But for me, it was like, just, you know, stay on a straight and steady course and you'll get out of here alive. Um, and so I did, I made a lot of friends, but again, um, academics wasn't my priority. Uh, at the time, I was about 14, 15. I was working at my grandfather's barbershop in Queens, um, called the Hopkins Barbershop, and I used to sweep the floor, and I used to dust people off when they got their hair cut. Um, but as I watched people make money by cutting hair, I sat down with my grandfather and said, Papa, I want to learn how to cut hair. And he said, you sure? I said, yeah, I want to learn how to cut hair, Papa. So he said, all right, just watch me. So I watched him, watched the other barbers, developed my own style, and I thought to myself, well, I'm not making A's and B's, so I'm not my parents' favorite child right now, but maybe if I learn how to cut hair, my grandfather would be proud of me. So I have somebody that, that can uh, be proud of me. So I learned how to cut hair. Um, after school, go straight to the barbershop. Wasn't thinking about homework, wasn't thinking about studying. Straight to the barbershop, cut hair. Um, so I, I did that for a while, earned some good money as a teenager. Um, and, but my grandmother always told me, make sure you get your education. I don't care what you do, make sure you get your education. And, um, and so that always played in my mind over and over and over again. Um, but when you're in a barbershop and you're the owner's grandson, everybody's telling you, you're going to be the next up, you're going to take over, you're, you're the heir to the throne, so on and so forth. And I always thought to myself, but I still want to get my education. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I still want to go back to school. And I want to get a degree, so on and so forth. So senior year of high school, not doing well. Um, did an extra semester of high school. I don't, is that considered left back? I don't know. But I did an extra semester of high school. I still went to the prom and danced as if I'm graduating. <laughs> but I had to do an, an extra semester. And that moment was probably the most shameful, embarrassing. Um, I was disappointed in myself. And my parents were disappointed in me. I never heard the end of it. And so my father told me later, I actually had to do an extra semester too. Then I was like, well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Um, but it was a, a wake up moment for me. So then I, I thought to myself, well, if I'm not gonna excel in school, I gotta do something. So I kept uh, honing my skills as a barber, cutting hair, learning how to do the crispy lines and the fades and everything. So, um, but to try to keep up with the Joneses, I still went directly to college. Uh, I went to Meg Evers College in Brooklyn, New York. It's in Crown Heights, Best Eye area. And it's actually considered an HBCU. Don't sleep on Meg Evers College. Um, but while I was there, it was an hour and 45 minute train ride from Queens to Brooklyn. Um, I'm doing homework on the train as I'm going to school. It was not a priority. Again, I'm just doing it because it felt right. Um, I'm trying to keep up. And so I decided to take a, a time out. I didn't, I didn't want to say drop out, but I did take a time out so I could just be in the, in the business side of things 100%. So that's what I did. Um, so I'm in a barbershop all day, every day. Um, it's a family business. Again, I'm hearing this is going to be yours and you have to take care of it. And if you take care of business, business will take care of you. So I did. Um, New York is not a cheap place to live at all. It is very expensive. Um, and so I always like to save a little bit of money, but I knew that if I stayed in New York, um, cut hair was not going to fulfill my, the, the kind of lifestyle I wanted to live. So I thought to myself, well, let me just relocate for a second and, and see if I can save enough money to go back to school. And, and I said, well, I'm gonna take some time off. I spoke to my grandfather and he said, all right, you sure? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to move to Jonesboro, Georgia. He said, all right. And so my plan was to come here, work, save some money, go to school, and go back to New York. I'm still here. Um, and so on February 1st, 2009, I, I remember I came down to Atlanta with a friend and we kind of looked around at apartments and um, I said, well, these are a, a fraction of the cost of apartments in New York and they're twice as huge. Um, so I, I, I couldn't not give it a try. So I came down exactly one year from the day I visited in 2010, February 1st, 2010, and moved in with my childhood friend who was already living here. Uh, 
He had a two bedroom. He said, you can have the other bedroom, pay half the rent, we good. I said, all right. Um, so I did that, worked at a barbershop up the block in Jonesboro, um, and it was not the, the best of moments. The barbershop I worked at was a brand new barbershop, um, with some hoodlums in there. Uh, people were, you know, doing all the things that are not so professional. But, but here I am, and you know, brand new, the youngest one, and I'm, I'm competing against other people who are trying to, you know, earn their keep too. Um, and so I, I, I said, I, I can't do this for life. Like, I can't cut hair for life. I got to do something. So being in a barbershop, um, having conversations with people, um, I heard about Clayton State University. And somebody said, it's affordable. And that's all I needed to hear. Um, I didn't really care about the name. It didn't have to be a Morehouse. It didn't have to be a Clark. I just wanted to get my degree and own it. Um, and, and not be a part of something that's already huge. I kind of wanted to create my own legacy. So for me, being a part of a smaller school, a newer school, was exciting, more for exciting for me than being a part of a huge school that has a huge name. Um, I'd rather be, uh, I, I didn't want to be a small fish in a big pond. So um, between those times, I made some other choices that I really sat and thought to myself, how did I end up here? Um, how did I end up here? I'm sure my parents wouldn't be proud of me. Uh, I, I'm not proud of myself, but, and not to get into too much detail, but those choices really allowed me to sit with myself and make the decision that I'm not gonna be in this place anymore. So I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to make sure that I'm not in this place anymore. Um, and so, uh, I don't wanna get too much detail. But when I came uh, to Clay State, I did everything that was available to me under the sun. Um, I joined Saab, which is the Student African American Brotherhood. Um, there we had events that we still talk about to this day. Um, we had voter registration events. We um, had uh, community engagement events. Uh, so that helped me fall in love with college life, and it really helped me solidify my spot. As a student, I didn't really feel like I fit in. I was a non-traditional student. I was about 25, so I was still trying to fit in. Um, but I was welcomed, and it made me feel at home. So from there, uh, I joined AmeriCorps service program. Shout out to AmeriCorps. I don't know if anybody in AmeriCorps in here, but hey AmeriCorps, how y'all doing? Um, but AmeriCorps is great. It really helped me realize that the world is much bigger than you. There's a whole community outside of your home and they need help and they need your help. Uh, and so it helped me fall in love with community engagement and education because AmeriCorps also offered us an opportunity to go inside of the, the high schools, the local high schools, and work one-on-one -on -one with teachers and students. So I thought to myself, I'm an English major, I'm, I'm inside the high school, I'll be a teacher. So that was it. Um, I thought I was gonna be a teacher. And I did. Um, and I worked in, um, in the west side of Atlanta. I'll talk about more of that later. But, uh, so, so we did AmeriCorps, um, had tons of fun, made some of my best friends in AmeriCorps. And from there, I joined the top salon chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, which is here on campus. Um, and that made me fall in love with history, black history, and it made me realize that there are people who looked like me that started this huge thing. So if they can do it back in 1906 when we had all odds against us, and I have so much privilege at this point, maybe this will teach me to, to raise the bar a little bit further. Um, and so that's something that Alpha did for me. Um, and more importantly, the brothers within that chapter really pushed me along to do bigger and better things and let me know that I was capable of doing things that I didn't believe I can do. Um, so I graduated from Clayton State. I worked in campus life with, um, with the director and we, um, I was a, a graduate assistant. We helped out with the fraternity and sorority council. I expanded my network a little bit more, met more people. Then I thought, well, I got this English degree. Let me teach. That's what I came here to do. So I taught at um, a technical college up the block. I taught English as a second language. Um, and then we went to the west side of Atlanta. And once you get to the west side of Atlanta, things change. But I, I taught sixth grade English to, um, to students who had needs. They had, um, they had issues at home. Uh, they, they had issues in the classroom, and, and while I would love to think that I can do all these things and help them out because I'm a superhero, the truth is I'm not. And I realized that 
the classroom is maybe not for me because my patience is about this thin. If you can see it, it's about this thin. So I realized in order to, to do something that I love, I, I didn't want to get up every morning dreading going to work. I, I knew I had to change. So um, by divine intervention, one of my frat brothers told me, you know, they're looking for somebody at Clayton State. You're an alum and they need somebody in the alumni department. What better person to do it than you? And, um, and so I said, okay, I've applied for other jobs that I didn't get, but we'll try this one out. And I tell you, I, had, uh, I didn't have the highest hopes that I was gonna get this job because like I said, I've applied to a bunch of jobs here at Clayton State. Um, <laughs> But thank goodness they didn't, they didn't uh, hire me because I feel like this position was made for me, okay? Um, and so, so I'm here in, in the alumni engagement department and I find that I have a purpose. Um, I work with the alumni board. The alumni board are uh, comprised of people who I looked at as mentors. Um, Tiffany Burston is somebody I worked with in campus life while I was a student. Uh, I looked up to her as a mentor, now I get to work with her as a colleague in the alumni board. Um, I'm also meeting more people in the alumni board who we have this thing in common of just graduating from Clayton State. We, we know how much of a small, intimate community we have, and if you have that in common, then we, we, already make, we immediately have that bond. Um, so I get to work with the alumni board, um, I get to work with the Young Alumni Council, which are comprised of people who I went to school with, we were students together, somewhere along the line we disconnected and, and did our own thing and went our own separate ways, but we reconnected through the Young Alumni Council, which makes me very, very happy. Um, we have, I'm proud to say we have a future alumni network, which is now students who are bridging the gap between student and alumni. I'm very, very happy about that, very excited. We've been doing some great things and we're gonna have more things to come. Um, and we've been doing community service, we, um, we have social events. We just recently had a Braves game where we had tons of alumni come out, had the best time of our lives. Uh, faculty and staff too. Um, but for the most very recent thing that I'm very proud of was last week, um, it all came together for me. We had a campaign called Give for Greeks. And I, I caught headache after headache after headache meeting with those Greek folks because they're very strong-willed and stubborn and hard-headed, but we made it work. And we raised over $17,000 in a period of 48 hours with over 300 donors. And it far exceeded our expectations. Um, so I'm very glad that we did that. Um, so if I can leave one, one thing or two gems, I would say, um, Find your purpose, find something that you love to do, find something that when you get up in the morning and you realize it's time to get dressed for work, you're not dreading the process of going to work, you're excited. When we have alumni board meetings, I'm excited, I can't wait to go. I mean, yes, we have free food and it's usually really good food, but I, I look forward to working with the board members, hearing their perspectives, hearing how we can make this institution a better place. Um, and meeting with the Young Alumni Council, so looking at it from a young alumni perspective, uh, finding out what this school needs and how we can make it a better place through a young alumni perspective, and now through a student perspective, uh, or, or as I like to call them, a future alumni perspective. Um, so find your purpose, find something that you're, you, you're excited to do, um, trust yourself, and these are some gems that, that my, my parents taught me with, and, and this is how I navigated life with this moral compass is to, to, to trust yourself. Um, my grandmother always told me, no matter what you do, she said, even if you clean toilets, be the best person at that job. So be the best at whatever you do. Uh, trust yourself. Be comfortable with yourself, which means that when somebody tries to tell you that you should do something that you know doesn't align with your morals or, or your spirit doesn't feel it, it's okay to say, no, not gonna do that. Not gonna do it. They might get mad, they might get disappointed, they'll get over it. But as long as you're comfortable with yourself, you won't follow the crowd, you, you'll lead the path. If it don't feel right, it's because it isn't right. So a lot of times it goes back to, to trusting yourself. Um, people will get you, to, get you to try to do things that is right for them, but might not be right for you. If it's not right for you, if it doesn't feel right, it's because it is not right. Um, 
and 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 that's pretty much it. That that's my story. I don't really have um, a huge uh, you know gem to drop, but I, I just want to say thank you guys for coming out to listen. And if anybody has any questions, I'm willing to answer them. Sometimes, but they knew I was the owner's grandson, so they was like, he'll be all right. <laughs> um, but that's why I realized, maybe I need to start cutting hair, because that's when they're gonna start paying me, all uh, right? But, but for, for, for the time, I really did it for the fun. I wasn't looking to get paid. I mean, money was nice, but I really did it because I liked interacting. I'm a, I'm a fraternal guy, so working in the barbershop was perfect for me. I got to meet people um, who became friends. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't about the money, but I didn't get an email. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, um, you talked about, you said in your statement that you knew the place name was a place of affordability. So, when did that um, aspiration or when did their purpose of loving place name change? Um, and what made it change? It changed when I realized that you can literally do whatever you want at Clayton State. And you don't have to be coming out of high school with a 4.0, you don't have to be coming out as, um, uh, you know, uh, the most popular person. But if you want to come to Clayton State and you want to be the president of SGA, you could be the president of SGA. If you want to join AmeriCorps, you can join AmeriCorps. And it's a certain spirit among Clayton State students that they will propel you to whatever you want to do and they'll encourage you to do it. So once I realized that I had an immediate support system because people believe in you and they don't make you feel left out, look, again, I was not traditional. So I was thinking, you know, I go to class, come out, put my head down, do my homework, go to class, so on and so forth. I didn't think I was gonna have that college experience. Um, but once I came, when, when I came here and realized I can have a college experience, I fell in love. Yep. Mr. Oh, yes ma'am. So you said that you, um, you were working three jobs. Mm -hmm. And you applied to Clayton State. Yes. How were you able to balance everything um, to maintain that GPA that you needed to, to graduate. Oh, that's a good job. That's a good, yeah, that's a good question. I left out an important part. Um, <laughs> I was doing those three jobs before I came to Clayton State. But when I came here, I realized I don't have time. So what I did was I brought the skill that I already had to Clayton State. And so a lot of people knew me just from being the campus barber. That's just who I was. I, I, so I, I cut hair. Gotcha. And, um, it, it, the name grew and people found out about me. I had a little Twitter, um, but I was just the campus barber. I'd be at campus cuts, um, and that was it. So, could, didn't have time for the jobs, but I kept the work at home. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, question. Oh, yes. So, as much as our journeys often define us and we look back and we appreciate everything that it was, is there anything that we would have done differently or wanted to do, wish we had done differently? Yeah, um, I wish I would have trusted myself. I wish I was more comfortable with myself to where I didn't feel like I had to go to college in order to keep up. So I did, and I wasted a lot of time and money. Um, and I do appreciate my days at Becker Evers because they did teach me a lot. But if I could change anything, I would, I would have waited, I would have worked, and I would have kept doing what I was doing. Um, but I just felt like, well, my sisters are going to college. My cousins are going, you know, you just go straight to college when you graduate high school. But that's not for everybody. You have to find your own path. And you have to find your own timing. So um, I would have had more of a sense of timing for myself. Yeah. Good question, though. Thank you. Yes, sir. If someone wants to get involved with the future alumni network, the library of living. Sure, if they want to get involved with the Future Alumni Network, um, they can reach out to myself um, at oscarhopkins at clayton.edu. They can reach out to the president, her name is Jordan Ficklin, um, and or the vice president who, who is uh, Zion Young Joseph, I'm sure everybody knows Zion. Um, or you can reach out to Michael Little at michaellittle at clayton.edu. We, we all uh, represent the Future Alumni Network in some capacity. Any other questions? How long were you at the school? Uh, was it elementary or middle or high? Oh, when I was teaching English? Yes. Oh, um, months. 
<laughs> yeah, I had to get out. Mm -mm. Nope, it wasn't for me. Uh, literally just like three months. Um, my stress levels, I felt empty coming out of work every day. Uh, and I was like, no, we ain't doing this. And so again, learning how to trust yourself, knowing what's for you and what's not for you, and taking action immediately. Don't, I didn't want to just be there just to be there. Just to get paid, you know, I wanted to find something. I didn't want to waste any time. It's time to move on. Um, so, like two months, yeah. I miss those kids though. They were, they were cool. <laughs> they got issues. It was sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade English. And, and, I, and they're, they're still in there. We're trying to learn how to form words stage so that I have to talk a lot. And I can't with the, um, the talking a lot. I can't. Yeah. So you've just had the chance to share your story. Mm -hmm. As you share your story, do you hear it differently? Do you hear lessons in, in the things that you went through that you would like to pass on to everybody else? Because I think it's one thing to, to, to kind of talk and read from your script, but as you hear yourself and hear some of the questions, are there emerging lessons that you experienced and learned that you would like to share with folks? Yeah, um, and, and like I was telling Jeff, I think, um, yes, as an adult, you look at things and you say, wish I would have did that differently or I wish I would have learned that lesson sooner. Um, but what I can share is that you're going to have bumps in the road. You're going to have times where you doubt yourself, where you feel like you might not finish whatever it is you, tr you started. Um, but all, all I can say is trust the process, which for me was faith. I, when I moved here, um, my mom is a, you know, she's, she's an organist at church. She, I grew up in church pretty much. Um, but when I moved here, I, there were times when I just felt defeated. I thought I was going to have to move back home. I'm broke. I'm borderline homeless. I have no money. I'm driving around without insurance because I, I have to get around. But I, you know, um, and I found myself one time in a Spanish church. And I don't speak Spanish. But it was something about the, the energy and, and just believing that there's a higher power and believing that there's a higher purpose for you. You might not even know what that purpose is, but, but somebody does. Um, so just holding on to whatever faith you have and, and, um, and using that to propel yourself. Um, because sometimes all you have is faith. And at one point, that's all I had. I, I literally didn't have anything else. So whatever faith it is, uh, you know, whatever you believe in, um, hold true to that and hold dear to that and don't take it for granted. So that'll be one thing that I will leave everybody with. Yep. Yeah. If there are no more questions, guys, I really, really appreciate everybody coming out today. Um, again, I just live every day as if, you know, whatever, I gotta do what I gotta do. So yeah, we've come this far by faith. It's like everybody standing here has had a story. They, they have a story. Um, but uh, whether we know it or not, we, we believe in ourselves. So that's why we're here right now. So thank you guys. Thanks everyone for coming out to our, thanks everyone for coming out to our Laker lessons. And um, let's give Mr. Oscar Hopkins another round of applause. For sure. Appreciate it.